Hey Theory Scholars, it's Dr. Thomas here with a quick video on how to fill out a matrix. So I've started here with our P row here that you're given. And you'll always be given your first row. You'll put it on the top row of your matrix. The first thing you want to do is label it as P4. Um, the first number here is always going to be what our index number is here. Next, we want to label our I columns and they will correspond with the, each number. So I4, I5, and so on. All right, the next thing you want to do is take this number that's in the top upper left uh, corner of the matrix and draw it diagonally down so that it goes to the bottom rightmost box. This is a feature of all matrices. They always have this same number running diagonally down. And the next we need to figure out what our I4 column is. And how we do that is we will take a look at the index numbers, our first P and our I, add them up together. So 4 plus 4 equals 8. Um, and then we are going to subtract each of these index numbers from our I's from 8. So 8 minus 3, or 8 minus 5 is 3. And then 8 minus 9, when we're, we're dealing with uh, a number that is larger than what we're subtracting from, we can think in mod 12 math. So add 12 to 8, that's going to equal 20. So 20 minus 9 is 11. 8 minus 0 is 8, obviously. And then we can keep on going. 8 minus 2 is 6. And there we have our I4 column. And then we can label each of these P forms, our P rows, with the number that's in that column. Next, we want to fill out the matrix with the different P rows. The way that I do it is I will start on the P row that is a half step above the one that I have at the top. So I've given P4 here, I will start with P5 and just simply add a one to each one of these P4 numbers and that'll give me P5. So four plus one is five, five plus one is six, nine plus one is 10 and so on. Having this four diagonal is helpful to check our math. Once I've done P5, I'm going to go find P6 and add one to each of these to get P6. Now P7. And there you have it. The entire matrix is filled. And the last thing I want to do is just label our retrograde rows. And they always correspond with whatever P row we have. So this will be R four, so because it's the reverse of P4, this would be R3, because it's the reverse of a retrograde of P3, and so on. And then our RI rows, or RI columns, will correspond to our I columns, so RI4, RI5, and so on. And there you have a completed matrix.